Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin sayidina wa habibina wa syafi'ina wa nuri qulubina wa qurati a'yunina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa bari wa salim. Wa ta'allama wa ta'ani mutadhakkara wa tazkira nafa'a wa intifa' wa rifada wa istifada wal hasa ala tamassuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa du'a ila al huda dalala al khair ibtigha'a wajhi Allah wa maradatihi wa qurbi wa thawabi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma inna nas'alaka al 'ilma ladunni ومشرب الصافي الهاني وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني مشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم نسألك العلم لدني مشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله نعم we are on the chapter on purification right and we are on the We have, we have, uh, where are we? We have reached the area of, uh, what has, we have finished what I have made bathing obligatory, right? We are all the way down to here. Mm. Wa illa jit na'am, here. Thank you. Uh, wa bi ru'yatil man, uh, وبرؤية المني في ثوبه أو فراش لا ينام فيه غيره. Okay, so things that make the bath obligatory. Right, so we have gone through uh, from the very beginning. I right, from the very beginning, things like menses, death, menses, and nifas. They put this first three because they're the most, the most, the easiest lah to 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 figure it out. Death is death, menstruation, right? Uh, and then uh, nifas. And, we, and and last week I went through the definitions of these words. Giving birth, even if it's just a clot of blood, a piece of flesh, even when there is no blood or fluids discharged during its exit, so giving birth basically means the remove or the 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 exit of anything that is of human origin. Okay, the exit of anything that is of human origin, which means that you must be able to identify is it of human origin or not. Like it's wajib eh, to be able to identify if it's of human origin or not. If you cannot identify or ascertain that it is of human origin. So how do we identify it's of human origin? By someone who is experienced. Right, the one who is experienced, Ahlul Khibar, right? Uh, Ahlul Khibra in Arabic. Ahlul Khibra meaning people of experience. You look at a clot, you can tell it is human or non-human. Right, because it is possible for a person to, um, uh, I can't remember what it's called in, 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 in the medical terms, right? But it's possible for a, per, for, for a body to produce, um, what do you call it, um, an amniotic, a, a, amniotic sac without any fetus inside. It's possible. Right? And the body can do that. Right? So it's, and what, how does it happen? It happens when, like for example, the egg of a woman is fertilized right, by, 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 by a sperm and therefore the fetus begins to grow. Right, the zygote, zygote begins to grow, but the zygote fails to implant. Right, so the zygote actually dies, dies off. The body does not detect this. The body is busy preparing for the zygote. Right, so the body has, and it has happened to many women. And in fact, it's something that's common. It is quite common. Right, so and it's, I can't remember what is the name of it. Some, it's called something pregnancy, which means that it's not, it's not a real pregnancy. So the body begins to form, um, uh to form to form a, a form a, a sac for the for the for the embryo it's as if there is pregnancy but there is no pregnancy there is no human being there right? but there is an empty sac an empty sac and the and this empty sac produces hormones by which a pregnancy kit will tell you is positive pregnancy but there is no pregnancy and the body will usually detect this within two months so if two months of this happening the body will detect there is no growth. Right, so when the body detects there is no growth, the body will automatically throw out that sac. It's an empty sac of no human being. Right, that is not called nifas. That is called haid. So if it happens to a woman, that is called haid. Even though she says, I took the, the test kit, I went to the doctor, took a blood test, everything, they say I was pregnant. But I was, as, as, as someone who's, who does fake, they will say that, how long was it? And she says it was only uh, uh six weeks, right? less than two months. Six weeks pregnancy, not counted. And in fake, 
uh, uh, menses. Uh, your blood that you're experiencing right now, what you're going through right now is not a miscarriage in Fiki. It's not a miscarriage. Uh, but it's basically, um, there was no pregnancy to begin with. There was n the body, the body, um, uh, basically, there was no, there was no implantation, there was, there was no human being to begin with. There was no human being uh, who was there. Uh, so I can't remember the, the term of it. The day I, the day I just, I was just looking it up because some, I get, I get having a lot of questions about these kind of things. So I didn't look it up. And I found out in the medical world, they have a term for it. And I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> right, but, but there's a term for it. Um, and in, like, in, 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 in the Malay culture or in our culture, they will always say like the jinn took the baby. But actually there was no baby. <laughs> I just say, oh, I was actually pregnant. I was giving, I was, I was, I was, I was vomiting and having all the signs and symptoms whatsoever. And then when you check, there's nothing there. Uh, it's, it, this is what happened, lah. Like right? the body just made a, a, a an empty sac, and the sac was the sac is the one that the body would expel. So when the body expels the sac. You have a clot. It's, it's, it's a clot of blood. So people will think that it's a human being, but it's not a human being. It's just the placenta that has no, that had never had a human being there in the first place. So al khibra somebody of experience will tell you there's no human being there. There's no, there's no, it's not of human, it's not of human origin. It's an empty sac, right? So therefore, the blood that comes out gets the ruling of menses and not nifas. What's the main difference? Menses have a maximum of fifteen days, right, to get it clear. Nifas you have a maximum of sixty days to get it clear. Right, so if the blood were to continue beyond 15 days, you go into istihaba. If you hukumkan the blood to be nifas, you are given up to 60 days for it to clear. And that's the biggest difference. Right, but the hukum all, you can pray, can, can fast, can, everything all the same lah. It's all the same. Right, it's just that, it's just number of days, the maximum number of days that, that you're allowed to, um, uh, to be in that condition before you go into istihaba. Okay, so it has to be identified as a human being in the asl adami. He has to be identified as a human being min al khibra by someone of experience, and he has to be a physical identification. Identification. I asked, I asked Mujib a few times, what if she went through, you know, like like you know, ultrasound, and she went through, you know, all these things, and the doctor says there is a, there is that she's pregnant. You know, why if why if you go to all the the modern day technology? And he said, and he said, I'm pregnant before two months. It was said, there's pregnancy. She says, even so, even so, uh, it has to be identified physically that it's a human being. You must physically identify as a human being. So when I checked again with the, with the medical world, it's actually not possible before um, three months for them to actually really say it's a human being. They will just say it, they are pregnant. But actually, all they see is um, uh, movements. And of pulses that could possibly be not a human being, uh, but it's just from the signs show that there's pregnancy there. Uh, but is that is it possible? But, 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 but there's nothing there. So in Islam, usually we wait until three months or four months to say before somebody is pregnant. Uh, so in two months, uh, they, they won't they won't they won't say pregnancy. In the modern in the modern world, <laughs> right? They're so confident. Eh? <laughs> uh, even one week, two weeks, they can say already. But actually, so many it could be so many other things that's not pregnancy. Uh, instead of pregnancies. And then people all go through all kinds of um, emotional turmoil, thinking they're pregnant and they were never pregnant in the first place and thinking they didn't miscarriage, they, never, they actually didn't miscarriage. There was no baby in the first place <laughs> and, and all that. Lah. Right, so it's all, um, Mashallah, the Fiki was, is actually advanced. <laughs> like, Fiki is more advanced than the science of the of the time. And it always you wonder how our Fukaha knew all this. Eh? How did they figure it out? Eh? That, that, that it cannot be more less than three months. Some of them say no more than three. No, it cannot be less than three months to to say it's a pregnancy. It has to be more than two or three months. They say they say between eight to ten weeks. Then you can tell for sure it's a human being. Before that, it's not possible to tell that it's a human being. No, and now till today, the 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 medicine world will, will admit it. You can't actually tell. And it has to be until more than two or three months. Then you can tell. Um, no, mashallah. Uh, mage, uh, so, so, um, so, so if you can identify that it was a human being that came out, then that is birth. Uh, that is counted as birth. Uh, no matter how, no matter how early in the, no matter how, not how, no matter how early, but as long as it's after two months minimum, but I'll put three months, because there's a, there's a, there's a khilaf, right? So I'll say three months minimum, and right? you see it come out, right? Um, then it's a human being lah. And you can ascertain that, that you have miscarried. So you have, you've given birth. Right, so in a sense, if there's no blood that follows it, then you have to bathe from it because you just gave birth. 
right? But if there is blood that follows it, then you're into nifas, right? And therefore you bathe after the nifas. Okay, so you don't you don't, you don't bathe, you know, when you're you're, you're nifas. <laughs> you when the nifas finish lah, you can bathe, right? Um, okay. The next one, the major ritual impurity that is caused by excretion of semen, janaba. Okay, janaba. This happens with the coming out of semen or many, many is sexual uh, emissions that happen to men and to women as last week we mentioned. And it's known by, it's all we went through last week, eh? it's known by the um, the spurts, you mentioned last week, spurts, the orgasm. So all last week we went through, right? Spurts, orgasm, um, the smell of it, right? Such and do when it's still wet or like egg white when it's dried, right? So all the um, intercourse. Right, so the entry of the head of the penis, or its equivalent, is equal. What do you mean? What equivalent? Right. Right. What does it mean? Is that um, if a man is um, his sexual organ has been cut, right, or his you know like an accident or maybe a malformed uh, from birth, for example, lah. Eh? So if someone has a, has something that is deficient, than what other men have. Right, so whatever it is, so it's, it's equivalent. So whatever it is, either he has, if that thing enters into, into the into the the privacy of a, of a female, janaba, even if there is no ejaculation, even if it's completely dry, if no no ejaculation, junu, right, straight away by by the by the mere entrance, junu, right, I, and only and only the hit of a of a of a male organ into the female organ. Anything else will not put you in Juno, okay? <laughs> right. So I had a question once my my my, my student laugh because of the of the menstrual cup. The menstrual cup or tampon, you know, you put it into your into your into your female organ. It does not put you into Juno la. It's not a male part. <laughs> it's a cup. <laughs> Can because someone asked me, like she, cause she, like, all she knows of whatever has entered her is her husband. It's her husband lah. So she's like, but she she shouldn't use the menstrual cup. She was like, if I put the menstrual cup in and take out, must I beef? I said, no, it's not a male part. It's a cup. <laughs> right. it's specifically a male part. Okay? Right, so it uh, doesn't matter what else you want. Uh, even if it's a tampon or whatever, it doesn't put you into Juno. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right. Um, okay, or even the anus or privates of a corpse or privates of an animals, even when there is a thick barrier. Okay, okay all of this part, anus, privates of a corpse, privates of the animals, all Kabair, 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 major sin. Okay, major sin. And the fuqaha speak about this because people do it. The, the fuqaha will not mention anything if people are not doing it. Right, but, uh, but they mention it because they know of people who have done it. Right, people who have, 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 have had intercourse with corpses. Right, it, is, it, is, it is sick. La, it's sick. Right, but, but there is a... There is a um, the story of a man who used to he used to steal from he used to steal from graves. So in the night he would go to the graves and he would dig up graves and he would steal the coffin and sell the coffin. You know, uh, it's cloth lah, and he would sell the cloth. So there was once this man, right? He dug a grave and he took out the coffin of the, of the one who's who's buried in the grave, and it was a very beautiful woman. So. It, it's not haram, haram, but but he was a very beautiful woman. So he took the the coffin off. The woman is is naked, lah. Right? It, was, it was major sin, major sin. So he was his shahwat came up, right? and he then and and he had intercourse with the corpse, the dead person. Right? The story and you can find the books books of the of the of the of the ulama. Right? They speak about it. It happened. It happened. Right? So he had intercourse with her, right? and when he did that, right, the, the the corpse dua to Allah tau. The the corpse, the woman who was being Abusing that way, the one who's dead, she's dead, but she dua to Allah. She's of, of she's of the righteous life, this woman. Dua to Allah, right? So Allah calls for this man, right? Uh, his uh, his 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 he couldn't his hand right got stuck on the woman's skin. It got fused in, and he could not escape from there. Uh, so basically, he got stuck lah. His body got stuck with the woman. Right, so it, um, and also in the morning, people found him in that state. Right, so of course they they uh they did they, they had to tawasu and everything and all that to get him uh released. Right, from if I'm not wrong, the woman actually held his hand, something like that, to 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 catch him in doing what he did. 
Right, so then he got uh, severely punished, severely punished for doing that. Uh, yeah, major sin, major sin. Uh, Primus of an animal, Imam Mahadat mentions this in the Book of Assistance. The Book of Assistance, Imam Mahadat mentions the story of a man who was a righteous man, um, and he had a female donkey. And the people will say to him, you know, like, why do you have a female donkey? And then he was like, to keep myself chaste. And they were like, oh, what do you mean? I go and get married. No, 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 no. I am focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm, I'm praying all day. I am, I'm fasting all night. I, I, and, and my donkey is enough for me. And they said, what do you mean your donkey is enough for you? Right? And then he was like, I don't need any woman. I am doing anything at all. I'm just worshipping. And then they found out that he was actually uh, having intercourse with his donkey to, 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 to remove his shawat. Right? And he didn't realize it was haram. He did not realize it was haram. And this is like Imam she says in the Book of Assistance showing the, the, the severity of jahil, the severity of ignorance. Don't know that it was haram. So when he found, when people were like, are you having intercourse with your donkey? And he was like, yes, what's wrong with that? Is that haram? And the Lama was like, that is kabair, <laughs> major sin. And he was like, huh? And he got, he got so distressed. Do you mean all this while I've been doing major sin? I didn't know. And they said, because you never learn. <laughs> you don't go to, to, to classes and go and learn. And uh, almu nur, and knowledge is light. While well, well, jahil zalam, and, and, and ignorance is, 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 is darknesses. And he was, he, he, he freaked out. And when he found out what he was doing was, was a major sin. So the scholars write this because it happened. People did it without realizing it's haram. Even the one with, with the cops, people might not even think it's haram. Haram, haram. You cannot hurt the cops in that way. It's even haram to touch the privates of the cops with uh, with bare hands. So the, it's haram, eh, to touch the privates of the cops in the bare hands. When you wash the janaza, you must cover your hands. Wajib to cover your hands. Wajib, right? The one who's washing the janaza cannot. You cannot see the aura of the cops. Haram, right? So the haram is on those who are alive. You must jaga the aura. I must look after the aura of, of, of the cops. It's on you. The amana is on you to look after the, the aura of the cops. You know, inshallah. Even there's a thick barrier, like for example, condoms. I assume the diaphragm or whatsoever. Um, it's still, it goes into, the person goes into it. Um, uh, Janu, uh, Janaba. Okay. Um, okay, so just one, one commentary. Right, so for a woman, right, a woman can possibly get orgasm without any penetration. Okay. So if a woman is, um, in a sense, uh, having foreplay with her husband, with no intercourse, right? If she detects in herself, uh, the lazus, yani a sexual high, that fo- that, that it is full with with um excretions that come in in spurts, so she must identify that she is in junub, even if her husband is not. Uh, it's possible that he's not in junub and she's in junub. Because his junub is only by the excrement of, of the semen or by um by by, by intercourse itself. Right? So by penetration itself. Right? So she, it's possible that she by just foreplay she can actually go into uh junub. Right? By 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 her own um shahawat lah. Right? It's possible. All all important because you don't want to go around and you have junub on you have no clue, you take wudu, you go and pray, take wudu, go and pray, but you're in junub. <laughs> Right, I mean, you're not even you're in major hadas. That's one Allah. Okay, then the next one is you detect semen or you detect um uh, for the woman uh, the money, right, on your clothes or the place where you slept that no one else sleeps except for you. So there's a chance that you ejaculated, you know, or you you know had um money come out of you without realizing when you were sleeping. Okay, so if you see it, even if you don't remember anything at all. I had a student that after I taught this in the class, right? She was like, she thought to herself, is it even possible for people to, you know, have, you know, ejaculations in their sleep? And that night, so she gonna, like, gonna white wonder, right? Now gonna, right? So that night, she gonna, and she didn't even realize she gonna, until she, 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 she ejaculated, until she woke up, and then she felt, comp- she felt very tired. The futur, that is one, one of the, some, one of the signs, futur, that means, uh, exhaustion. And she said, why am I exhausted? Let's like, see if I just had intercourse. Because she's married. Like. And she was like, why am I, why do I feel exhausted? exhausted? She didn't remember a single thing. Didn't remember the dream. Didn't remember anything. Didn't detect anything at all whatsoever. Nothing. All she felt was the exhaustion of intercourse. So she's like, probably I did do it in the night. So when she checked in her underwear, yeah, there was a uh, fluid there. 
But she remember a single thing. No dream. Not, don't remember anything. Nothing. No, no sensation. Nothing. <laughs> just remember that she's tired in the morning. <laughs> I said so that means uh, happened now in the night. And so all the the scholars would say the signs of it. So you could even be unaware of the dream. You could even be unaware. <laughs> and then you wake up and like I feel like I just had intercourse. Then you're like when when they when they have intercourse. <laughs> right, probably in the in your dreams so you don't even remember. Um, fik it fik it very blunt. Eh? Fik it is really all out there because it's 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 your prayer. So so like this is thick. Eh? Uh, don't pray in your engine room. <laughs> uh, and um. I, and whatever prohibited during the state of major, uh, as in whatever prohibited during the state of major ritual impurity, is prohibited in the state of minor ritual impurity. Right. So it um. The Bali, the English. The Bali, the English, the Bali. Right. Wa yaharumu bil janabati ma yaharumu bil hadasi. Okay. Meaning, meaning, whatever is haram on a person who is in minor a hadas is also haram on someone in major hadas. Right, the English is a bit, is that way wrong again? Correct, is that way wrong? Okay, so for example, in minor hadas, you cannot pray. In minor hadas, you can't touch the mushaf. In minor hadas, you cannot tawaf, right? In minor hadas, what else can you do? Uh, that's all, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all. You can touch the mushaf, you can tawaf, you can uh, pray, right? That's, that's what is haram for the one in minor hadas. Yeah. So in major hadas, you can do these three things as well, plus uh, extra things you can do. Okay, so all that you can do without wudu, you cannot do when you are in junub or in major hadath. Understood, understood. Plus a few more things, like recitation. Right, so you can you can recite the Quran when you're in minor hadas. Like right now, if I don't have wudu right now, for example, and I want to read at the kursi, go ahead. I want to read at uh, uh, to to to, to, to revise my memorization. Go ahead, no problem. But if let's say I'm on my menses and I want to recite, no, I cannot. If I'm on my junub, I want to recite, cannot. And for recitation, not for not for not for we did eh, for for this recitation, I can. Even if it's all in my memory, cannot. I can't do that. So if I about to say, you know, al fatiha, those on the menses cannot. But I I memorize fatiha, nope. Right, al fatiha cannot. Right, those on menses will say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Seven times to replace the seven ayats of Fatiha. Okay, so you all know, eh? If it's Allah, Hadrat Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fatiha, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illa Allah, Allah Akbar. Not, 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 not Fatiha, eh? Even, even Wal Asr, even Wal Asr, you know, Allah to say, eh? For those on menses, I must say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illa Allah, Allah Akbar. You, 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 you will observe, like, whenever I'm on my menses, you know, you know, whenever I'm on my menses, if I'm on my menses, I will say Surah Asr. When I'm not on my menses, I will say well, Asr, and I'm reading the surah. I'll, I'll just, just, just slight difference. Lah. <laughs> so when I say surah Asr, then I will go subhanallah, alhamdulillah, in, in, my, in my heart. Because I'm on my menses. I can't say surah Asr. I, I can read surah Asr. Inshallah. And sometimes I just skip the whole thing. Just, you all read it yourself. <laughs> Good. Um, nah. Okay. Right. So it is prohibited in the state of, of major impurity to remain in the mosque. Right. Referring to the prayer area. That means the sembadan eh? The prayer area, the place where is wakaf, that is masjid. Right, passing through is permissible. Um, she has to enter from one door and exit through another, with the conviction that she will not stay in the mosque, nor will she dirty the mosque. Tamam. Right. So no sitting in the mosque. Right? A woman on menses or uh, nifas uh, cannot enter the mosque. Right. But she has she's allowed to go through. I go through in, uh, going through the mosque is permissible, but going through means one door to another door. Permissible. She can't go in and come out the same door. But she go through one door to come out the other door. So like that, the old Mijah Halid, now there's a new one, eh? no, the, the, the one that they used to go for classes, that there's a door from the front and a door to the wudu area. Okay? Uh, so if you want to, for some reason, like, walk that way, um, and you have to, I don't know why, uh, but you can do that way. 
can give you on your menses, you can do that. Right. Uh, and but she must not sit in the mosque and stay in the mosque. I right. to enter or exit the mosque without any need or varied reason um, is not permissible. Okay. To read the Quran with the sole purpose of recitation, it is not permissible. Right. For the one who is on major hadas. And there's more rulings. This one is specifically on Janaba. It's on Junub. Right. For for menses is more. Like for menses, um, inability to fast, inability to inter have intercourse, um, and also inability to be divorced. I mean, not, not inability, but, but haram to be divorced. She can be divorced, but it's haram on the husband to divorce a woman who is on her menses. As it's haram for a husband to divorce his wife when she's pregnant. The divorce sah, divorce jato, uh, is sah, right? but uh, haram. I want him to do that. Okay. There's more like actually, but here it's only about Junub. Eh? So here it's all still about Junub. It's all Junub. Not, there's, there's a big difference between Junub and Major Hadas. There's a difference. Right? So on Mansa Nifas, Haram to take Wudu. And on Junub, Sunnah to take Wudu. And to, to actually remove the minor Hadas. Okay, chapter on the ways to perform obligatory bath. So here in this part, they didn't actually go into Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad. Didn't actually go into um. Didn't actually go into the what is haram on the one who is on menses or nifas, but they are speaking about the one that is haram on on those who are on jinn. Okay, I want you to highlight this thing. Eh, let me just go here. Wa yahrumu bil janaba. Highlight this. Janaba. Okay, here's your main difference. Right? Janaba is not menses. Menses is part of Janaba. But Janaba is specifically sexual um, reasons into going to major hadath. Menses and nifas is something else. Right? It's more. It's more than this. They don't want to speak about it. In in, in your book, Surah Naja, they actually went into it in detail. Eh? Right? On, on minor hadas, on Janaba, then on menses. Right? And, and it increases in that way. Minor hadas has, has the least amount of things that is haram going to do, then Janaba has a bit more, then menses has a bit more. Mm. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, for Janaba, uh, for those on Junub, uh, it is not permissible for those on Junub to, to recite any Quran at all, even if it's wirid. Uh, on Junub. Why? Because you can remove Junub. Junub is re removable. Just go and bathe. Uh, unlike the one on menses and on nifas, is not removable whenever you want to remove it. You have to wait until you are clean. Right, so Janaba, so for example, somebody just had intercourse, right? And that person wants to do her wirid, for example, eh? in, the, in, in that state of, of Junub. Not permissible. Not permissible to recite anything in the state of Junub. But they have to actually go and take a bath. Right? And then come out and then continue. Okay. All right. Okay, the next question, the next section. Chapter on the ways of um. Okay, right now at the end of this, at the end of this chapter, this first part here, uh, additional things that is haram on the one on nifas and uh, additional thing that is, that is haram on the one on nifas and menses. So I don't see that they put it anywhere in the book. So we just put it in, we just add it in here. I think it comes later on. And the Nifas and, 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 or maybe it was earlier on, is it? I know it may be somewhere else. But I just put it here, like, just remind yourself, eh? What is additional that is haram on the one on Menses and Nifas, right, is, um, to, uh, perform, to, 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 to fast, right, to fast is haram, right, so you're not allowed to fast, uh, to have intercourse, right, haram, the woman on Menses can have intercourse, and for the husband to divorce her. Right, additional things, eh? Okay. Also, haram on her to perform wudu. To 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 tahara to the need of ibadah is haram on her to do to do so. Now, there's the main difference between the one on menses and the one on janaba. Okay. Uh, next chapter. Right, current chapter. Now. Um. 
depend okay the sin is mainly on the man because he is the doer of the action the woman's not the doer of the action but she needs to uh, stop him right from doing it right, or tell him that she's on her menses if she she fails to actually inform him and then he thinks she is clean then of course the sin is on her lah uh, she has deceived her husband and in fact there is a hadith about the i can't remember what is what what that what the name of this woman is called I mean, this is the term for her a woman who tells her husband that she's on her menses when she's actually not on her menses to stop him from intercourse that uh kabai major dosa and a woman who tells her husband she's not on her menses when she's, when she's actually on her menses to get him to have intercourse with her uh, so that one is um uh haram haram <laughs> kabair there's a name for her like i can't remember her name there's, there's a term for that kind of woman who does that right? but there's some actually want severely against women who play their menses timing and they, they, they and they fool their husbands uh into not having intercourse with them or having intercourse with them okay the next part a chapter on the ways of performing the, the obligatory obligatory bath faslun wa qallu al-ghusli niyatu raf' al-janaba right a uh, chapter and the minimum of and the minimum requirements of the obligatory bath to be valid is the intention to remove to lift or remove the major impurity or the major state of impurity or to make the obligatory bath or to remove major impurity right so you're going to say you can say niyat in a raf' al-raf' al-janaba or niyat fard al-ghusli you can say i intend the major i intend the compulsory bath you can say that i intend to do the compulsory bath there is there is enough as a niyat i intend to remove major impurity enough i intend to remove janaba enough is so all uh, a niyat said so all uh, valid niyats uh, ensure the water touches every hair and skin of your body every crack every corner everything uh, the running water must touch all parts of your body okay so it's obligatory to simultaneously make the intention at the state of at the start of washing oneself when water touches our body then we make the intention right so um and in this case uh, as you mentioned earlier on that because uh with the removal of your major hadas comes the removal of the minor hadas and it is together eh? so when you remove your major hadas the minor hadas is removed together um so in that case the scholars will say that you 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 istinja first at the beginning of your bath sunnah to istinja first right and then to intend to remove janaba or hadas akbar major hadas from the area of your privates uh, you intend that you intend you intend that first and then you stand up and you perform your wudu sunnah lah from your wudu if you don't perform your wudu it's okay just go on into your bath right and and when you come out of your bath you finish your bath you have wudu and your wudu is there because you've done the istinja before the bath right so you intend to remove janaba from the parts of um the the, the privates lah okay so the so the sunnahs of of bathing and sunnahs of bathing is first and foremost face the qibla so where was the qibla in your house face the qibla right uh say bismillah rahman rahim if you're not in the bathroom right so if you're it's like in the past they used to bathe in 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 uh cubicles it's not bathroom bathroom is where you excrete a najis this bucket bathroom but they used to bathe in like cotton off areas and just take a bath there and right? so uh like like uh, bathing what do you call it uh i can't remember bath houses or something like that right? in the past you used to have bath houses Right, so it, um, they used to do that, right? And 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 in the in the past, right, in that time of Rasulullah Islam, they would bathe in their own houses, right? Because why? The floor of their houses is 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 sand, so bathing is a matter of pouring water on your body, right? Whereas going to the bathroom requires you know to be far from the house, because of the smell of najis. So for for them bathroom means going out of the house. In some verses, some they used to go to the wilderness, they just go to the desert, and they would just do their um you know their, their bathroom in the desert. They, they had no toilets in the time of verses, some. So all the women, the men, they would just go somewhere far out of Medina, and they would just do their um what would they have to do outside of Medina? That was how they were. So when when the Muslims when the Muslim Empire expanded and they went into other lands. 
they found out other societies or other cultures actually make a specific place for um, excretions, right? So, or excrements. So, this was brought to the, to the attention of Sina Aisha, who was the faqiha. Right, so now they have to discuss what's the ruling. <laughs> because for now, it's for us obvious, like it's not in our houses. But when it actually appeared in the Muslim Ummah, the Sahaba discussed, is it okay to have bathrooms in the house when bathrooms hold najis? <laughs> right. They actually discussed it. You know, and, and uh, they came to the ruling that it's permissible for as long as the najis stays where it is and not enter into the place of living. So then they used, and the Muslims began to build um, an annex to their own houses. They had an annex that goes to the uh, bathroom. And Zainal Aisha was one of those who, who she said it was okay. And she said, in fact, it would be a good thing because it protects our women more. Uh, and they don't have to go so far to the wilderness and go into their bathroom there. You know what happens to them again? Right? So if it's right next to the house, it's much easier when it comes to our and it comes to all kinds of things, you know, safety and so on. Uh, they actually discussed it, no? They actually discussed it, is it permissible or not? Because <laughs> it's, 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 it's a bidah. Right? Bathroom in the house is a bidah. Right? So the, the, the Sahaba actually came together and discussed, is this a permissible bidah or not? <laughs> no, inshallah. Uh, inshallah. But for us now, it's just jam, understood lah, got bathroom in the house, a few bathrooms in fact. <laughs> inshallah. Right? So, um, but, but, but bathing was known to always be done in the house. Because they had, they had sand as ground. They had no like towels or carpets or whatever. They had sand. Right? So they made the water go right into the sand. Lah. It's easy for them. So they will face the Qibla. They will say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Right? Because they're not in the bathroom. And they will intend their, their ghusl. They will wash both palms first. In case there's nudges on the palms. Then they will uh, remove any form of filth. Um, eh. Okay, you know what? I changed the translation. It's a bit weird translation here. Uh, no, 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 correct, correct. They wash both palms. They wash their, palm, their palms first. Then they will uh, remove any najis on the meaning istinja. They will istinja and they will wash away any najis on, on, on themselves together with the intention to remove janaba or major hadas from the private parts. Okay? So the very beginning of washing, you really intend. So when you wash your palms, you intend that the janaba be removed from your hands. You wash your privates, you intend the janaba be removed from your privates. Then take a full wudu. Wudu intend to remove minor hadath. Okay, a full wudu intend to remove minor hadath together with siwak and everything. Full wudu. Right, and then, um, and then ensure water uh, flows in the places where they, are, that, that they have folds. Right, so you're going to have to take the water and you're going to Pour the water specifically at you know indentations or folds, right? So where are the folds of a human being? Um, they say under the arms, the armpits. Because sometimes people people bathe and they fail to actually ensure the armpits are actually uh, washed behind the knees, the joints, eh? Where the joints are behind the knees, uh, between the toes and the toenails, right? For water to go through, uh, to to, to pass through, and then uh, also uh, the 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 belly button. I also behind the ears, ensure the water goes there. So you're going to ensure all these areas first before you take the full bath. I'm going to put water all there. And then uh, also the um, the fat on, on a human being. The fat on, on the body or on the whatever line the fat is. <laughs> right, so just ensure that it goes between. If there are cracks in the feet, it has to go between the cracks. It go inside the cracks of the feet. Okay, all of these places where they have water, go through. Um, okay. And the, and the ears also make sure that the water goes through, goes on the on the curve of the ears, right? Because if you just wash yourself, you might not wash that part. Right? So make sure the water just goes through these places, eh? Right? And then and then to start with the head and to rub the water to the roots of the hair, so to ensure the water goes all the way through to the scalp, right? And then three times, two times with wet hands to make sure the water does that, right? And then pouring water over the whole head, then the right side of the body, followed by the left. Then uh, do this three times. Right, right front, right back, left front, left back. Then right front, left back, left front, left back. Or you can do right, 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 right. Then left, 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 left. It's up to you. How you want to do it. And to rub, it's all sunnah. Eh? To rub the body. It means to, to, to rub your, your hand on the body itself. It is all sunnah for us to do. And then sunnah to have the niyat with you at the whole time you're doing the bath. And so throughout the bath, you're doing the niyat. 
right? It's to not as well from the start to the end of the bath. And the water used for the obligatory bath should not be less than a sock, right? A sock is a uh, is, is is about three liters. I usually always use more three liters of water, <laughs> right? So, but it shouldn't be less than three liters. Right? High chances most people in our time will use more than three liters you know, of water. And then it's requirement for women, except those undergoing the waiting period of idda to death, to cover the trace of the blood with musk oil. Right, so it's sunnah. It's sunnah for women, right? Um, to if you you just finish your menses, to get um musk oil, right, and 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 rub it around, but not touching around um the vagina. Okay, so as to be to sm to remove the smell of blood. Okay, so to rub the the, the musk in that area, tamang. There's a hadith of, of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, you know, a woman asking him how how does she come out of her menses, and he said, you know, he he gave the the, the rulings of of the bath, and at the end of the of his answer, he said, and then wipe yourself with some mask. He said, and then wipe yourself with some mask, and the woman was like, wipe what? And he said, wipe yourself with mask, and she said, wipe what? <laughs> and he was like, Subhanallah. Wipe yourself with mask, <laughs> and then Sayyidina so, Aisha put to the side. And Aisha was like, "Wipe your private parts, lah." <laughs> He's too shy to say it to you. You should know. <laughs> the woman was like, "Oh, okay." So the other one was so shy. He said, wipe yourself, yourself." <laughs> so you know, Aisha had to split it up for her <laughs> because she was so uh, unaware of what she should wipe. <laughs> Why? What else? Why? What else? <laughs> no, Subhanallah. Um, and so she wiped her private parts eh, with musk and this was in the past whereby the musk was pure if your chemical musk I don't know whether it, it hurts that part or it's, it's not safe Allah alam but try and get pure like pure oils <laughs> maybe there are it's like, I don't know if there's any essential oils that you can use for lavender or something like that. <laughs> as well as the smell is nice get nice smells and wipe that part now um, and, and following with what is the fragrance of the earth however she, she does not find any of such then she needs to use enough of to use water to wash that part, right? So for those who are uh, uh, menstruating or pregnant, right? So just to keep herself clean, right? So I don't know about vaginal washes, Allah alam, <laughs> but I guess same ruling lah, eh? right? Same, same to keep herself clean. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, no. Just to finish last part. He should not be a, a, a man after after seminal discharge or after intercourse should not uh, bathe prior to urinating because in case there is still uh, money inside of him, right? So because it's the same tract, the same tube brings out money, it brings out urine, right? So if he feel if he has not urinated, he should urinate first to clear the tract of any form of money, then take the bath. Otherwise, it's possible that after he took the bath, then he uh, urinated that more money came out because of, of it being left behind in the uh, in the urethra. Um, it is recommended to make re remembrance zikr uh, from Rasulullah SAW after finishing the bath, and the zikr of after the bath is the same zikr of after wudu. Same one. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa sharika lah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah anta nistaufir kama tuwbil. Allah majjalni min tawabin, majjalni min tawhirin, majjalni min ibadika salihin. Same dua after wudu is after bath. Right, and not to ask help from anyone to pour water for you. Right during wudu and during bath similarly. I both are the same. I don't ask someone to help you pour water. Okay. Alright, any questions? We can end here. And the questions? Yes. The what? Mm. Sunnah. Mm. So all sunnah. All, all this sunnah. The only wajib is niat water. <laughs> two, two wajib here. Yeah. Everything else sunnah. Yeah, yeah, yes, can, can, unless you are on the email hadas. Mm. If you're on the email hadas, then you have to, uh, listen, you have to be continuous, lah.
Okay. Ba'anda wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa